Lofting. My name is Alex Lofting, a mechanical engineer. I work for Bureau Hapod in the UK. Um, I have a fondness for California. I lived and worked in, in California for six years and it's great to be back. Uh, first time in the Bureau Hapod um, LA office and we've been here doing a, a big review of the mechanical team and some of the work, great work they've been doing. It's been really, really um, great. I'm here to talk to you tonight about a project I have in London. Um, uh, and it's, it's a slightly different way of looking at whole life carbon of buildings and, and how we construct them. It's a healthy building, so the two previous speakers would be very happy to know that we're doing all the well things and we're actually going for well platinum. But we're also looking at the whole life carbon of the building. So not only are we designing it with very efficient operational MEP systems, we're looking at the material choice and it's, it's a timber construction frame, which is CLT. As we know, there's a lot of um, anxiety at the moment about carbon and the future and lots of people in, in the UK particularly are protesting about how we need to change the way we go about our process of designing and actually constructing buildings. Uh, and there's actually quite a lot of press about the word eco-anxiety and people making the right choice in, in not only where they choose to live, but where they choose to work, where they choose to um, uh, be in, in, a, in a building that actually is not affecting the environment. So I think it's our job and our role to look at doing things differently. And this project's great because we're not just looking at the operational carbon, we're looking at the whole life carbon of the building. And if the slide goes on to the next one, you'll see that there is... Um, Okay, so we have the whole life carbon of a building. Uh, we've historically looked at in use, and as MEP engineers we've worked really hard at reducing the carbon emissions of in use, but actually there's a lot more to it. There's a lot more of a story. You extract the materials, you then choose the material, you construct it, and then what do you do at the end? And I think we need to start looking at the whole story, and particularly what we're constructing the building out of. Um, and then what do we do at the end? Does it go into landfill and go back up into the atmosphere or can we deconstruct it and reuse it? In the UK, um, we, we're moving away from natural gas and we're going to all electric buildings like you guys are doing here. And we're seeing with the grid decarbonising as well that in the old days the operational carbon was a huge chunk of it. And, and in these days the operational carbon is a lot less and it's the embodied carbon that is, is creating more of the carbon emission of the whole process. So when look, we're choosing to, to go towards a timber building, which has a lot less impact on the, on the um, whole life carbon story than just going with a, with a concrete building. And for this, this is a slightly emerging idea, and we're working with our architectural partners here, and we're saying if we're taking into account the sequestered carbon in timber, which is the carbon locked in the, in the timber structure, and we're looking at how we deconstruct it at the end of the building so it's not going into landfill, we're saying that we have a negative um, impact. We have a negative carbon in, in, in tons of, of the timber building. So at the beginning of the project, we are we have a negative number because we've got a, a, effectively a carbon bank of the timber, and then the operational carbon chips away at that. And we're saying for this particular project, uh, we're being net carbon zero for 57 years because we've chosen to do timber at the very beginning and I think we all need to think about what we're building our buildings out of and the whole life carbon story and I will then hand you on to the next speaker. Thank you.